Welcome to the cockpit of the G3000 Parta G Touch in the Phenom 300. We're going to show you some of the differences between the Garmin 3000 and the Garmin 1000 system. We'll start by talking about the touch controller. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the G3000 system is a touch screen controller which replaces many of the knobs and buttons that are typically on the PFDs and the MFD of the G1000 system. Garmin touch controller here also called a GTC, uh, allows us to manipulate our moving map, traffic system, weather, terrain awareness, and all the other systems of the avionics and the airplane itself. In the uh, Phenom 300, we have two Garmin touch controllers, one for the pilot, one for the co-pilot. That's typical on most G3000 installations. It is a single pilot certified jet, so of course, if it was operated by a single pilot, that person could uh, control both of the GTCs. This system allows us to control what we're seeing either on the multifunction display or on the primary flight display. And we can control the functions of the map, traffic system, weather, or terrain awareness system. We can of course control our flight plan right here on the Garmin touch controllers. We're currently going direct to our destination, Washington County, Pennsylvania. We can go direct to any fix from here. And we can also display aircraft systems information. Control that here and display it either on the primary flight display or on the multifunction display. We can see that the doors on the airplane are closed, which is a good thing because we're at 45,000 feet. We can see our environmental control system, uh, electrical system, fuel system and the ice protection system all while the left hand side of the multifunction display is continuing to display the moving map and the flight plan. This is a, a new feature on the G3000 different than the G1000 where we could only see one thing on the MFD at a time. One of the functions of the joysticks at the bottom left of the GTCs is to select which of the displays, the MFD or the PFD, you're going to be manipulating. I found that it's a little bit easy to mess this up. You have to check at the top of the screen to see which one is selected before you start punching buttons on the GTC. One of the new features of the G3000 compared to the G1000 is the ability to create user-defined holding patterns. This has been a uh, request of operators of the G1000 for a long time and now we see it incorporated in the uh, G3000. Uh, creating a holding pattern is quite easy. We can select a fix for a hold. We can click here, hold at waypoint. We select uh, what direction of turns we want, what course we want to hold on, if we're going to be making our holding pattern with a timed leg or a distance leg. Estimated uh, Expect further clearance time, which just gives you an alert when you reach it. And then you can create the hold just by clicking there and it goes right in your flight plan. Very simple. If we look at our multifunction display, we can adjust some of the map features. Here you see a split screen where the pilot can choose uh, what he, wants, he or she wants to see on the left side of the MFD and the co-pilot can select what he or she wants to see on the right side of the MFD. In this case, the co-pilot's uh, moving map display is zoomed in more than the pilot's. Here's the full screen display. The displays are also much larger, which allows us to uh, have a better picture of what's happening, better situational awareness, uh, more information is displayed. Uh, and also they are higher resolution than on the Garmin 1000 system. Uh, over on the primary flight displays, we also have the ability to split these screens. If I push the uh, PFD settings button and then PFD mode to split screen, I can also display uh, information on the PFD in addition to just the primary flight instruments. So now controlling my primary flight display. I can also display systems information like we did on the multifunction display. Or I can have a large moving map like you see here. 
we can also display a dedicated traffic map. The particular aircraft we're flying today has a TCAS-2. In fact, all of the G3000 equipped Phenom 300s have TCAS-2. Uh, there's no traffic around us at the moment, at least not near our altitude because we're flying at 45,000 feet. Uh, weather capability, we don't have our XM subscription set up yet, but if we did, you'd see it there. We can also display our airborne weather radar. The aircraft's onboard weather radar can also be displayed on the moving map. This was a feature long sought after by G1000 users. If we want to tune a radio, there's several ways to do it, but most commonly you can touch here, enter the frequency you want. For example, if we were assigned frequency 125.2, I actually only have to enter 252 and transfer automatically makes that my active frequency. We are directing LB star and if I want to switch my standby to my active, I just tap on the active on the top and it flip flops. Navigation radio tuning is done from the audio and radios page. In this airplane, really, you only need to use your navigation radios for an ILS, and those are auto tuned when you load the ILS as a procedure. But if you wanted to manually adjust your navigation radios, you can click here, enter the frequency, and either enter or transfer to make it active. Aircraft equipped with uh, HF radio. The HF radio would appear here in the audio and radios page. The Garmin G3000 also allows for very easy and elegant integration of the new controller pilot data link communications, or CPDLC which is mandated in Europe beginning next year, 2014. And if this aircraft was equipped with CPDLC, you would see a button for that function on the homepage. We hope that you enjoyed this review of the G3000. If you have any questions, just give us a call. We look forward to talking with you.